Hey everyone, Tom Stelauer here. In today's video, we're covering the five types of the ketogenic diet. Now, you might think that it's a one-size-fits-all approach with keto, but no, there's a lot of different forms that you can do. Different forms where you cycle in and out with carbohydrates. Quite frankly, you can have your cake and eat it too, but we're gonna cover a lot of these and you're gonna have a clear understanding. So first, we'll talk about the standard ketogenic diet, which is probably what you know most of. Then we'll move into therapeutic. We'll talk about how it works for neurological situations. Then we'll get fun and we'll start talking about how you can cycle in and out of ketosis with cyclical ketogenic diets. There's actually two kinds that we'll cover. And then we'll move into a really fun one called targeted ketogenic, where you strategically time carbohydrates around your workout to improve performance, but also, again, get to have your cake and eat it too. And then lastly, we'll cover carnivore and talk a little bit about that because there's some interesting stuff that you should learn there. So let's go ahead, let's jump right into some easy science and have some fun with this. Please do hit that red subscribe button for daily videos and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. All right, so first things first, the standard ketogenic diet, nothing crazy fancy here, but it does set the foundation for everything else that we're talking about. The standard ketogenic diet is usually 75% fat, 20% protein, and 5% carbohydrate. Now, I will say in my own experience and through my own research, I will say you can have significantly more protein than that. You can decrease that fat ratio and have more protein, but this video isn't about that. That is just what is standard keto. Now, in order to make some sense of all of this and to keep it simple, I'm just gonna reference one broad study, which is the two-year Verta Health study. Okay, this is a two-year long study that looked at the long-term effects of keto, and they found that the ketogenic diet in a standard form, 74% adherence rate. That's unheard of. That's higher than any other dietary pattern. Okay, 54.7% reversal in type two diabetes, then a huge decrease in A1C, a 12% decrease in body weight over two years. So they followed people along for two years doing keto. 12% reduction in body weight, 35% reduction in C-reactive protein, that's your inflammation, and lastly, a 22% reduction in triglycerides. Simply put, standard keto works. It works for health, it works for weight loss, but it's just the basic foundation. And I have plenty of other videos that talk about the nitty gritty details and different things of keto. So let's not waste our time here. Let's move into this kind of different stuff. The next form of ketosis that you might hear people talk about or you might be interested for yourself is called therapeutic ketosis. The therapeutic ketogenic diet is the one that was first created by the medical community and it was to treat epilepsy and to treat other neurological conditions. The whole idea with therapeutic ketosis is to get ketones as high as we can. Okay, we're looking at 90% fat, 10% protein, and less than 1% carbohydrate. Obviously, that's extreme. That's practically eating coconut oil and a sliver of like chicken liver, right? Okay, the point is, is it's effective because it gets your ketones really high. Well, all the studies that we look at ultimately are inconclusive to see if high levels of ketones are good for the normal person. Like, are really high levels of ketones doing anything cool for the standard person? We don't know. But we do know that high levels of ketones have immense effects on people with neurological conditions, such as epilepsy. And the reason is simple. Ketones are a clean burning energy. And ketones compete with glucose. No matter what, if you're doing keto, you still have blood sugar, you still have sugar in your blood. If your blood sugar went to zero, you'd drop dead. So you always have glucose. But even when you have ketones, your body's competing. The more ketones that you have available, the less your body's gonna run on glucose. Well, here's the thing, glucose burns dirty. Glucose is like a big diesel semi truck, right? Burns a lot of black smoke and it creates a lot of waste. Ketones burn very clean, okay? So if we have the brain run on a higher amount of ketones, the brain runs cleaner, which means the brain has to spend less energy cleaning up, which is very, very good for neurological conditions. That's the simplicity of therapeutic keto. Let's now move in to keto cycling and cyclic ketogenic diets because these, these are the fun ones and these are where I get fascinating. Now, I've divided them into two categories because in my nine, 10 years of doing the ketogenic diet, I've experimented with both and I can tell you which one I personally like. But let's start with type one. Type one is cyclical keto where maybe two days per week, you have higher amounts of carbohydrates. So you go standard keto, like, you know, the type number one that we talked about, standard ketogenic diet for five days out of the week, but then two days out of the week on separate occasions, like maybe Wednesday and Sunday, you have high amounts of carbohydrates. We're talking upwards of 200, 300 grams of carbohydrates. You load up, okay? And the premise of cyclical ketogenic dieting is to load up your glycogen stores, that's the carbohydrate that's stored in your muscles, load it up, and then go right back into ketosis. 
The caveat is you load up on so many carbohydrates, you're not really getting back into ketosis until it's almost time to eat carbs again. So you're not getting the full benefit of the ketogenic diet, in my opinion, with that. So we can talk a little bit more about how that works. When you eat that many carbohydrates, it is a very clear and defined kick you out of ketosis moment. Okay, if you have 50 carbs, yeah, you'll get kicked out of ketosis, but you probably will come back in pretty soon. If you have two or 300, you're out and you're out for a little while. So what I recommend if you're going to do a cyclical ketogenic diet is commit to doing six months of standard keto before you ever do cyclical. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to get fat adapted. And fat adaptation means your body's foundation now becomes running on ketones and fat, which means that is the new norm. So when you do have carbohydrates, your body does everything in its power to get back to homeostasis and get back to its norm. It wants to go back to burning fats. Whereas if you were to just jump in right now, never doing keto and doing a cyclical ketogenic diet, you would probably not be very fat adapted. Your body would still be vacillating and wanting to run on carbs, okay? Now there's certainly some benefits with doing a cyclical ketogenic diet like this, okay? By consistently teetering on the edge of ketosis and then going back to glucose, ketosis and carbs, ketosis and carbs, you do allow the body the ability to run on both fuels quite efficiently. It's like you're learning two languages. It's like your body becomes bilingual, okay? So you do develop this ability to kind of run on both a little bit more efficiently. So it's great for the athlete, it really is. Before I jump into my favorite kind, the type two cyclical ketogenic diet, let me quickly say that if you are doing keto and you are experimenting with some of these cyclical forms and stuff like that, please do check out Thrive Market down below in the description. I've been able to create specific ketogenic boxes and fasting boxes. So they're grocery boxes. So Thrive is an online membership-based grocery store, but because I have a good partnership with them, I've been able to grab the groceries that I think my clients and people that watch my videos should eat, and I put them in a specific box or bundle through Thrive, and that way it's like you're going grocery shopping with me, and I change it regularly, I update it, so that way you can see, oh, this is what Thomas recommends, I'm gonna go ahead and order this grocery box, and it gets delivered right to your doorstep. So super, super cool, Thrive is awesome, and they're a huge supporter of this channel, so thank you, Thrive, for making it possible for everyone. Link is below in the description after you watch this video so you get more information. Now let's move into cyclical ketogenic dieting type two. And this, quite frankly, I'll fall on the sword and be honest, this is more like what I do, okay? So what I do is I'll do like two months of strict keto and then I'll take two weeks off of keto and eat clean carbs. And that's my ketogenic cycling. So rather than doing two carb days per week, I do like two carb weeks every couple of months. And what I find is that allows me to get the benefits of getting deep into ketosis and then completely shift gears and get the benefits of carbs. Because we have to admit, there's benefits to both. Carbs just largely have more drawbacks. So I, don't, I wanna limit the amount of time there. So here's what's wild. When you first go back into some carbohydrates after being keto for a while, you feel foggy. And you feel foggy in the brain simply because you become glucose intolerant. Now, is that bad? It is if it's long-term. When you're doing keto, your body kind of forgets how to run on copious amounts of glucose. It forgets how to run on carbohydrates for a little bit of time, which means that when you do have carbohydrates, your cells don't even accept it. So all of a sudden you have this high blood sugar and it makes you feel foggy and weird. But you have to give it a couple of days for that to go away. So then when I go on two weeks of carbohydrates, it gives me ample time to get through the three-day fogginess and actually reap the benefits of running on the carbohydrates. I restore my glycogen levels and I'm good to go. Now, for those of you that are science nerds, please, please, please stick with me because I'm gonna get back to the simple stuff and I know I have a lot of science nerds that watch my channel. I will say that you could make the argument that as you do keto for a longer period of time, your body gets really good at storing carbohydrates from protein and things that you eat. It's called gluconeogenesis. So the more, the longer that you do keto, the actual less carbs you need to eat to actually restore the carbohydrates in your muscles. Everything that I'm talking about here is all about how do we do keto while still maintaining high levels of muscle glycogen so we can work out, okay? So this is kind of for the athlete. Now let's move into something that's really fascinating and that's called targeted ketogenic diet. And that is still to some degree a form of cyclical keto, but it's much more targeted. It sounds advanced, but it's actually not. I use this protocol with uh, special forces clients of mine, with uh, military, with law enforcement, with people that are in kind of extreme anaerobic scenarios, uh, NFL, MLB, people that I work with in that case. So what this looks like is your strict ketogenic dieting, except right after your workout, you have like 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates to immediately restore your muscle glycogen. 
Why do we do this and not the other way? Well, simply put, after a workout, you're insulin sensitive. And that means that if you do consume carbohydrates, they're gonna get stored in the muscle cell versus circulate through the bloodstream blocking ketones. It is the one and only time where you can get away with having some carbohydrates. So you might as well capitalize on it, right? Additionally, after a workout, your natural levels of glucose are higher. What that means is after a workout, the stress of the workout makes your blood sugar go up. Yeah, so you'll find even if you're deep in ketosis, if you go do a hard workout, you're, you're gonna be out of ketosis at the end of the workout. So you're already out of ketosis. It's like double jeopardy, right? You've already done the crime. You're already out of keto. You might as well go ahead and add carbs to the mix and get some benefit of it. So I play around with this too. So you have 30 to 50 grams of clean carbohydrates and voila, then you're knocked out of keto for an hour, but then you're back in it. I love targeted keto if you have a specific application for it. Okay, if you wanna see another video on that, please do let me know in the comment section because I'd love to get into more detail on that. The last thing we need to talk about is one that is all the rage right now, which is the carnivore diet. Carnivore is effectively a zero carb diet. Okay, in a lot of ways, it's like therapeutic keto, except the protein amounts are way, way higher. It's just like the name implies. Okay, you are restricting all foods that are not meat and animal based. Now, depends on how far you want to go down this path. I could do a whole separate video on it, one could argue that even dairy is too far for carnivore. Carnivore should just be meat, ultimately eggs, and really just meat. Okay, and you're relying on the benefit of protein, but more so what you're looking at with the carnivore diet is the benefit of the elimination. Okay, sure, the meat has its properties, it has its vitamin A, it has its, you know, everything that it needs, right? Everything that you need. But the real benefit of carnivore, with people that do that, is the elimination of other foods that could cause issues. So everyone has a different opinion on carnivore. I'm fairly neutral. I think that carnivore, when you restrict food down to just meat for a period of time, can be very, very, very effective at controlling inflammation. And the studies are showing it, controls inflammation. We just don't know what's gonna happen long-term because we could argue that yes, we need some gut diversity from different foods because we do need a plethora of bacteria within our gut to actually allow our body to function well. So that one could argue that, okay, well, I need to eat some plant sources so it feeds other bacteria. If you only eat meat, your gut bacteria diversity is going to decrease, which explains why you might feel good because you have less potential risk, but you're also limiting your gut bacteria, which means when you do eat something inflammatory, you could potentially react really bad. I, I know, you know anecdotal situations. I know people that have done carnivore for three, six months, and then they have fruit and they gain like six pounds for two weeks because they're holding water and they feel puffy. That's what we have to be concerned with. Now, I will say, I think there's therapeutic uses for it. The other piece that we have to look at is you do not need fiber. Okay, the Journal of Gastroenterology published a study that found that people that went on a zero fiber diet with IBS and things like that saw dramatic improvements above those that consumed fiber. So if you have inflammatory issues, reducing fiber by going carnivore could be very, 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 very effective for you. It's kind of like visualizing a, uh, a freeway. And if you have a tr uh, an accident on the freeway, which is like a little blockage, and then all of a sudden you uh, have more fiber coming into the mix, being more cars, it's gonna back up. But if you reduce the fiber, then traffic can move freely, right? So anyhow, super, super simple. So the five types of keto, just to recap here, standard ketogenic diet is your foundation, okay? Therapeutic ketogenic diet is great if you are dealing with a mental issue or if you're dealing with any kind of neurological epilepsy, things like that. Then we've got the cyclical ketogenic diet, okay? This is type one and type two where you cycle in and out. Okay, then we have targeted ketogenic diet, which is kind of my personal favorite just because it's interesting. And lastly, we have carnivore. So as always, I do ask that you please hit that red subscribe button. We do daily videos, so you're never gonna miss a beat. And make sure you hit that little bell icon. So make sure you're keeping it locked in. See you in the next video.